Hello, I'm Timothy Law Snyder. I am president of Loyola Marymount University, LMU. I'm happy to be here on location at the Lions Athletic Center with women's basketball head coach Erica Hughes, with men's basketball head coach Stan Johnson. We are ready to rock. Let's start out by talking a bit about LMU students. We say a lot about our students. We think they're special. Certainly you work very closely with them. And as we know, success in athletics means so much to them, so much to our university and its future. What makes our students different? I call it holistic. You know, they have a, a holistic approach. And the student athletes that we recruit, uh, although basketball is so important to them, you know, it's something they've dreamed about and they've done for a long time. They value the educational piece. You know, they also value the piece of being a great person. And those are the three ingredients to success here for them. And it's been pretty cool to be a part of and to see, you know, kids that obviously are really passionate about their passion, but also incredibly in tune with what it means to get a great education and care about that and value that and what it means for their life 40 years beyond the game. And obviously what it means to, to continue to grow as a human and have a tremendous impact in society, that's been pretty cool to be a part of. I'd have to piggyback on what Stan said. I think for us it's amazing to have access to authentic young women that want to come here and blaze trails. And I think that's something within the recruiting process that we look for. And recruiting them to a place that already supports whole person understanding what their responsibilities are to their community. Those things are already instilled in who we look at, which match perfectly with what we feel is what LME represents. So I think that's what makes our students just different. That's great. I'm so proud of them when I see them on the court, off the court, and then I see exactly what you're talking about. You know, run by them on the way to work, and it's just like, let's talk. And the first thing they do is they ask me how I am, and I think, okay, that's special. What excites you about this season this one for me I think it's getting an opportunity to really experience LMU coming in at a time where we saw so many people and pieces pull together to put on what we were able to experience just in general whether that was class from professors um, administration stepping up in areas to fill in gaps due to COVID our student athletes getting that experience last year was so special and allowed us to build and springboard into this season and, and really getting a chance to see what LMU is, um, what it looks like up close, whether that's starting with Madness on the Bluff, attending open games at the very beginning and supporting other support, sports here on campus or other initiatives. I think I'm really excited just to be here and see what this amazing campus um, is about. You know, I've said it to everybody I've talked to or interviews I've been on, just normalcy. You know, you, I mean, you and I, for two years now, uh, when I first got here, I think there was a stretch where sometimes I felt like I was on an island because there was no one on campus. And even last year, we were still trying to figure it out in terms of what COVID was or how we function, who comes to the games, uh, you know, how many games we're going to miss with COVID. I think just the normalcy of, of having a season and, and being able to plan and prepare and our guys feeling safe and not having to worry about that other than just I can focus on school and I can focus on basketball. That excites me. And then, like you said, like the pressure of competing. I love to compete. You know, nothing drives me nuts to sitting home in the summer. I, you know, you talk about pressure. I love that. Like pressure is a privilege. There's so many people who don't have an opportunity to experience that. So from a competitive standpoint, just being able to compete again and get our program continuing to move in the right direction. I'm, I'm excited about that. And spe speaking of competition and excitement, this is the first time I've seen either of you sitting down other than during the game when you're in the, on the little stool and you're like, okay, here's what's going to happen next. Here's where we're going with this. Um, so the, the coaching obviously has um, so many stresses. You know, you're dealing with the 
the emotional phenomena of the students, all that is going on in their lives, all of the pressure they're under, particularly the time pressure, the academic piece, the balance, and then of course getting the team to function in ways that's greater than the sum of, of its parts. So how are you, and what, what, are your, what are your specific techniques? What are you doing that other coaches are not doing that you can share? Well, I don't know. I don't talk to a bunch of them. You know, I've, I've got a few mentors. Uh, the one thing about coaching, too, like a lot of times in our industry, people don't like to share. You know, I think for the game to grow, it's important to share. It's how you develop younger coaches. Uh, because at the end of the day, even if I'm playing you, you still got to do it better than I do it. Uh, but the one thing that we, we're all about process. You know, that's my whole thing with our team. It's all about process. And it's respecting that process. And you hear culture, you know, that's a word that's thrown out so much in business, corporations, teams. Uh, but it is important for me, for our guys to understand our culture, who we are, what we're about, what we're fighting for. And so every week we're, we're building that culture. And that's not just something we talk about, it's something we train in a classroom setting. So for example, like today, we had an hour culture meeting. And I'm of the belief if you're intentional about those things and you continue to grow your program, winning will come. That's part of the process. But it takes time to do that. That's not something that just happens overnight. So that's a little different from any place I've been, really taking a day to sit down and just Focus on that so your kids can live that throughout the rest of the week, the month, the year, and the years to come. That's, that's something that's been a little different what I try to do than maybe places I've been. Yeah, it's interesting. I, I feel it when I talk with the players. And Coach A. They end their career maybe injury prone or, or what, what have you um, and have to go out into the job force and understand that maybe they weren't as prepared but we're able to fight through things. We want to bring in different individuals that have been in their same situation and really foster those conversations. We want them to be curious. I think we really listen to our players. We want to know what are they, what are they afraid of? What, it, what, what's the anxiety? How do you manage stress? We go above and beyond in those areas to understand. And that's not to keep them in the same place. But if I think if we can understand our student athletes better than we're going to I think we'll have a better blueprint on how to teach, mentor them. And then, of course, I think if you have players that know that you're invested in them, where we're going to see some, some wins, hopefully, out on the floor. You know, it's really interesting. You, you are coming at this from a Jesuit and Marymount perspective. You really are looking at the whole person. And you're saying that when shove comes to push and the game gets going, the Ws are going to drop out the bottom of this whole person exercise. So what about when the ball is bouncing? Describe your team in three words or less. What are we going to see? I think you're going to see a team that's together. We're resilient. And joy has been a superpower that I think our team has always had. You're going to see us have fun and enjoy one another from coaching staff all the way down to our managers. For me, it's number one, everything starts with being selfless and people have heard me say that, that's LM over you. Nothing's more important than our brand. And if you have a separate agenda, I don't want you on this team. You can't be on this team. We'll never win that way. And we, there's evidence of that. Uh, connected, you know, for me, we've talked about that. A connected team, you know, we value relationships before championships. That's important. And the most connected teams are the teams that win. You want to win, you got to have that certain connection, that's special. That takes no talent to do that. And the last thing is being relentless. And that's where I think my joy comes from. And what does that mean? We attack everything. And if you're a selfless team, you're a connected team, you're a relentless team, you give yourself every opportunity night in and night out to win a basketball game. And again, that does not happen overnight. That's the stuff we're trying to ingrain in our athletes and our guys so they can fight and, and have great joy. Like winning is fun, but you have to be able to do those three things to get to that, to that result. Yeah, all three. All three. That's right. So you've been in the empty arena. Certainly COVID helped with that. We had like two fans. I was half of that army of loudness. You helped us win a lot of games that year. Yeah, right. You did. <laughs> You're very kind. 
So you've also had the arena when we're, when we're packed. So let's do a sort of tearing here. Let's measure the arena and the experience and what it means when it's full versus when it's not so full. Well, you know, I want to say this to everybody and people who listen to this, you know, again, we're here to build a winner. And I have not been to any program or been a part of any university whose team was good that did not have the building filled. Like, I haven't seen it. Those two are connected, right? You, you look at, for example, last year, we lost 10 to 11 one to two possession games. I mean, that could change your whole season. And we had a lot to do with that. But playing in a building that's full, where it gives you an extra boost of confidence, especially on the day. There's some days you don't feel it. That's a separator in people's seasons and whether you become a championship team or not. So my message would be, it's Im almost impossible to do it without that six man, those bodies in the seat. And it gives you a chance to win because when the other opposing team comes in, now you have an environment they don't want to be in. Exactly. They that matters. So there's no comparison. You know, what we did the first year, um, we did it because we had to do, but that was, that was not how basketball and sports is supposed to be. That's not how anything's supposed to be. Uh, but I think that's the next step here. How can we get this building filled? How can we bring life and energy into this so we can create a winner? Because uh, it's important. I mean, can you follow up that answer with, with anything? I mean, what Stan said is spot on. Um, I'll, take, I'll, I'll take it to the next, I guess, level. Walking into other arenas and having to compete against, I know I'm going to have to have signals for calls because we're just not going to be able, my, my players, especially in the second half when they're away from us defensively, they're not going to be able to hear us. That changes the way that we coach. So to know the, the advantage that you have, um, also just understanding the environment that your players crave as, as wanting to put on a show, wanting to go out there and play for their friends, their family. It's a different level of a recruiting tool and the overall experience that we want to make sure that we provide. And man, it, it really is uh, it's pretty difficult when we walk into opposing teams when, when we have to go against our crowd. It'd be great if we had that same advantage. You know, I feel the same way. And I know when I walk in and when we are full, and especially when we're full and people bring it, like they're loud. Sometimes you know, we got a little LA thing going on and they're a little casual. And sometimes, you know, I'll go down there to the front and say, come on people, there's seven minutes left, let's rise. This thing, should, this place should be a den of lions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people ask me, you know, why do you care so much about athletics? Why are you going to these games? Here's why. Success in athletics is the fastest path toward renown and it affects Everything in the university affects our academics. It affects the quality of our staff, even our faculty. When you have greater renown, people are going to think you're a heavier weight institution or you apply for a grant. The better known you are, the, the better off you will be. So there's a positive feedback loop. But the other thing is the primary. There is no more wholesome, as one of my mentors used to speak of it, experience than going to a game. You know, students. Thursday night, Friday night, they can do whatever they want to do. You want to have real fun? You come be a real lion. Yeah, absolutely. And, and when, we're, when, that, when that place is going, there's no better party on the planet. And that, that's what we need to really make yeah. gel here. Again, my time at Marquette and Arizona State, but especially Marquette, like to see people in their 40s and 50s when they come back for reunions talking about those big games. You know, there's so many memories. Uh, and that's, that's an added bonus to this LMU experience that I think our kids uh, have missed out on. But, you know, it's our job to help to try to change that and shape that and, and give it to them. But um, I, I think we're making some serious progress towards that. Yeah, I'm feeling it too. And a lot of students are talking about it too. Parting thoughts? No, thank you for taking the time. I mean, right now, I know for me, year two, I'm so excited to be here. Um, I can remember when I was here and I was being interviewed and understanding what LMU meant to you. 
and the impact that it had on me and understanding that it's the people that make this university great, you being at the helm, I'm just appreciative. Yeah, I'd like to echo that. You know, again, I, I tell people all the time, you know, coaches win games, right? Administration, presidents, they win championships. And, and what's pretty cool about this is we have a president sitting here with the women's coach and the men's coach. You talk about the experience here at LMU and what makes it different. This is pretty cool. A lot of places I've been, I've been at eight places. You don't see the president. Oh, thank you. You both are very kind. And I, I will observe, this is the math person in me. The time you spent with me is double the time I spent with you. And so let's put that on record. Awesome. And let's bring it. Go Lions. Go, Go Lions. Lions. Thank you.